Hello there, this is Retro Spirits Garden, and this is Data East Collection, Classic Collection, on the Super Nintendo by Retrobit. We're running it on a Super NT here. Um, I've tried this cartridge out on original hardware, it does work. I've tried it on the Retro Freak, it doesn't work. And I've tried it on the Super NT, and it does work. So because Retro Freak is made by a competitive company to Retrobit, they've nobbled it on that device like a bunch of assholes. Anyway, what we have here is a collection of five games, two fighting games, Fighters History and Fighters History 2, two puzzle games, Magical Drop and Magical Drop 2, and a snooker game, or pool game rather, not snooker, called Side Pocket 2. So let's play the first fighting game. I'll give you a look at each game. Uh, this cartridge is a re well, it's not a repro. It's um, it's a black cartridge. Comes with a cartridge connector cover, like American games used to back in the day. This is the PAL version of the cartridge running on the Super NT, but it runs at 60 frames a second. And uh, here we've got Mizuguchi versus Lee on Fighters History. Uh, it comes in a box. Uh, sort of a retro bit styled SNES box PAL orientation and there's a couple of badges in the box pin badges um, so generally they've put together a little package my badges have got a fighter's history character and a magical drop character I don't know if that's the same for every single version of the cartridge but essentially we have five SNES games on one cartridge the cartridge is black and red I think I mentioned that it's pretty ugly. Pretty ugly looking car, it has to be said. Matches the box, the cardboard box colour. Comes in a plastic tray on the interior, uh, which SNES games never did that, did they? They um, came in cardboard boxes. And there's a little instruction book in there as well. The games themselves, I've never played the Fighters History games on the SNES. They're actually, well this one is actually fairly cool. One of them is harder than the other. I think I find the second one harder than this version. Uh, it's not Fighters History Dynamite, they're not conversions of the Neo Geo game as far as I know. This background's um, fairly pleasant colours, but a bit oddly drawn with the mountains there. And uh, Lee has got some nice animation. So this generally, the presentation is pretty good on this game. And uh, it's a shame that I never had it back in the day, I think I would have enjoyed it. Not sure it ever came out in the UK though. But now it has, courtesy of Retrobit. So, uh, nearly 30 years later, you can finally play this on your PAL fasteners. And we're all thankful for that. Just not play out there. So Mizuguchi wins. He always wins. He was like the, um, the most popular character in the arcade. That's why the sequel was basically named after him. But I always liked the uh, guy with the lightning thing on his chest. I can't remember his name. Lightning Boy, him. I always liked him. He's not in the sequel, Lightning Boy. He's in the first one. So the sequel here, Fighters History 2, is aptly named. And we have a reduced roster. We appear to have Chelnov as one of the characters, though. From Atomic, the Atomic Runner versus Mizuguchi with his crazy eyebrows that go above his... Um, what they called headband. Eyebrows so big that they cover a headband. Okay, he's got flaming feet. Oh, don't mess with him. He's got flaming fists. Oh, don't mess with him. Two reasons not to mess with Mizuguchi. Yeah, we've got some Japanese text there, so that's not been translated. CPU battle versus extra conflict. Uh, don't know what the extra stuff is, but Mizuguchi uh, is a story mode, and uh, this is just like an arcade mode. But Karnov there. There, he was a boss in Fighters History Dynamite, and Clan was also a boss in Fighters History Dynamite. So we do have some people from that game. This this is just not a conversion of that game. And Zazi was in Fighters History. So there we go. Looks like they've uh, they ripped off half the characters from that game. Put them in this. Lovely stuff. I did play the arcade original Fighters History when it first came out many many years ago. I'm pretty sure Lee was uh, one of the original combatants. Uh, like I said, this game is slightly harder than the first one. 
Uh, slightly easier to combo stuff though. Weirdly. I use the four button the four button layout, whereas the first one I think uses the six buttons, because it's based on an arcade version. It's based on the Neo Geo, maybe. But it's not that it's not that Neo Geo game. So yeah, two decent fighting games, it has to be said. The music on this game is very um strange. Uh, compositionally. I don't know how that tune fits with this background. Weird. Maybe it's maybe it's a, a character theme tune. Maybe Clown's got a happy theme tune. These characters have never really entered the pantheon of great video game characters, have they? I suppose Karnov is kind of known and Chelnov, but Clown. No one gives a shit about Clown, do they? And Lee is so generically Bruce Lee that he's never going to carve out his own little niche. Mizuguchi maybe, but he, yeah, he's like third tier. People who like fighting games probably would have heard of him, but uh, no one else. It's a bit of screen tearing there. So, um, I don't know if that was in the video or just in the game. In the game. There's a bear with glowing eyes, which is fairly scary, it has to be said. And in the background we've got some crazy ass portraits. That bear with glowing eyes is is crazy. Don't know what's going on there. Anyway, uh, I think I started to talk about how much this costs before. So this compilation, I've only seen for sale on online websites. I believe that at one point they did kind of have these in game. I'm not sure how well they did. But um, it costs about 28 quid. So for 28 quid you get five games in one cartridge. There's a second collection which has the Russian beat games on them. Which unfortunately is not readily available in PAL format. You'd have to import that from America. But that's a, probably a better selection of games, but a more limited selection. So on here you've got a bit of variety. And on that collection you've just got fighting games. They're both the same price. Magical Drop and Magical Drop 2, I think are an acquired taste. And I don't think I've acquired that taste quite yet. So there we have the Magical Dayris logo. There's nothing more exciting on a title screen than lots of brown. Like a table drawn in brown, in a brown room. Some squishy uh, logos there. This game is fairly ugly. It's not really taking advantage of the Super Famicom colour palette. We do have some animation on some of these characters though. And music which is very plinky plonky. This is converted from an arcade machine I believe. I don't know what hardware the arcade machine ran on. Potentially Data Race's own board. But as you can see the bubbles look like they're rendered in four colours. Which makes them fairly bland looking. Certainly not Puzzle Bobble. It um, only works on straight lines, so this is a bit like... This is to Puzzle Bobble what Columns is to Tetris. So Columns is inflexible compared to Tetris, and this is inflexible compared to Puzzle Bobble. Similar idea though, you've got to bust the balloons to stop the balloons touching the bottom of the screen. And in this game you're fighting against another character, or a second player, doing the same thing. But you suck bubbles off the pile of bubbles, your character holds them. And once three colours of the three bubbles of the same colour have been sucked off, you can fire them back and explode them, or you can make a collection of three bubbles on the screen and that will get rid of them. And put something nasty on your opponent's screen. Probably based on the character that you pick. I'm by no means an expert on this. I find it mildly diverting for five minutes, and then the inflexibility of the gameplay system means I get bored with it, and I go back to Puzzle Bobble because that game is genius. So Dayeries tried something a little bit different. They ripped off another company's games, and uh, it worked out okay for them. I think this game came out on loads of different platforms. You can't pick up two bubbles, two different coloured bubbles. They always have to be the same colour if you're going to pick them up. 
Whoa. I think I just screwed him over there. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's all right. It's probably better in two-player mode. Playing the computer is a bit boring, and it's it's just not as much fun as Puzzle Bobble Tetris. It's probably on par with Columns, so if you enjoyed Columns, you'll enjoy Magical Drop. Eon Genesis are responsible for this, and we've got a lovely big Data East logo there. Looks striking there, with its chromium finish. We have a, a lady floating down from space. Who is naked apart from a long piece of toilet roll wrapped around a whole body? Uh, we have some graphics moving around. Okay, it's a bit creepy. There's like a leering guy there. Angry person. And again, a girl with uh, three eyes. Well, you wouldn't believe it unless you saw it. This is a magical drop too. Again, it's got some squishy logos. 1996, this is quite a late Super Famicom game. I think uh, the last Super Famicom game was sort of 1998 though. Uh, yeah, 1996 is one of the late ones. And how does this differ from the previous one? Well... It looks like we've got a full screen here. And we've actually ripped off Puzzle Bubble Bubbles uh, a bit more conclusively this time, whereas like we've got a star a bubble with a star in it, we've got you know we've got icons inside the bubbles, which uh, apes puzzle bubble beautifully. Similar sort of gameplay though, same sort of rules. Looks like you can go uh, to the left or right of the screen and appear at the other side of the screen, so you don't have to walk all the way across the screen. You kind of get like a Pac-Man style wraparound, which is groovy. The music's a bit jaunty, kind of low quality, I would say, in its reproduction. It sounds a bit like Diddy Kong, actually, it's strange. And, um, yeah, much the same game by the looks of it. So, you're really going to have to enjoy your puzzle games to get the most out of this cart. Uh, this was a gift, this was a Christmas gift, and uh, I'm very thankful for it. I mean, I'm going to get loads of fun out of the Fight's History games, no doubt. And actually, the pool game's pretty damn good. Uh, I do enjoy the pool game. It's a bit creepy. It's got some um, issues with uh, ladies. Uh, but I think that's the Side Pocket game's uh, kind of unique selling point over other games is that they've always had a thing with ladies in it, which is very strange. So this is Side Pocket 2. This is presented oh, by speech. Data East. This is created by Iguana uh, Entertainment, who no longer exist. Do Data East uh, exist anymore? Don't know. But this is potentially made in the UK. I don't know. Someone will be able to tell me. Classic Iguana logo. We've got some, uh, some bass there and some jazzy synth. Yeah, so these ladies kind of just sort of smile at you, vacantly. Uh, you're, you're going to impress them with your ball handling skills, and how you cue those balls, and how you split those balls, and pocket those balls. The ladies love it, and it's a bit weird. Um, this is very much a product of its time, in terms of that. But, I, what I would say is, this doesn't go as far as some other pool games of the same era and you just get portraits of the ladies I'm not sure although I haven't completed the game I haven't gone through the whole, all the stages whether any of them actually um, get naked or anything like that which I believe does happen in some other pool games but the game of pool in this is actually pretty satisfying the only problem I've got is the resolution of the Super Famicom's pixels doesn't make lining up shots particularly easy. So you think you've lined up a shot nicely and uh, it hasn't because the pixels don't let you line it up as you'd wish, which is annoying. Other than that, it's pretty good. You can um, chip the ball over balls. You can get the ball to screw back, follow. You can put left and right swerve on it. All that 
business is groovy and you get bonus stages so that's cool the only thing that is weird is there's a digitized picture of a dude at the top of the screen and like I said there's the just the weird addition of portraits of women which adds nothing to the game whatsoever so there we go five games on one cartridge uh, three are pretty good, are pretty distracting. Two, the two puzzle games are either your thing or they're not. They're okay. And uh, yeah, I wish they would do a few more of these retro compilations, released a few games on cartridge, some of the rarest stuff that you don't see in PAL territories. I really would like to get the uh, the scrolling beat em up one. Oh, he just got a, uh, extra, some extra balls as I think that's more my bag. But anyway, pretty decent. So it's kind of recommended. Uh, I would see if it reduces in price. I think 30 quid is probably too much for this. But the uh, Fighters History games are good. So, okay. Kind of recommended it, I guess. See you next time. Ta-ra.